Hello everyone, it's GigaBeef here and today we're checking out the best cartridge for the 366 caliber, the legendary APM, and more specifically how it deals with plates in the new armor system. I've had a ton of people telling me everything from it being bugged through to getting one tapped even with class 4 on, so let's dive right in with where we stood just prior to patch 14. Historically, in the old system, APM was, and honestly still is, one of the best bullets in the whole game, especially for one that you can buy on the flea, but it's always been hampered by the extremely limited weapons that it's compatible with. Given it can only be used by the VPO 209, which practically looks most like a semi-auto AK, and the VPO 215, the starter bolt action, this kind of justifies its bonkers stats. With 90 damage and 42 pen, it's like an upgraded version of M80, outside of accuracy at least, and notably the 90 damage means that if you're not wearing armor, you will die in one shot to the chest area, which is quite unusual these days in Tarkov. However, as I have debunked in the past, in the old armor system, although the pen chance of APM against class 4 is extremely high, it won't one-shot you through that armor. This is because armor removes some damage from a bullet even when it goes through, so despite having an overwhelmingly likely chance to pen, it isn't actually able to kill a player with class 4 armor on in a single shot. Instead, it deals something like 73. But class 2 and class 3 are not high enough levels of protection to give any significant reduction, so it one-shots you through those as well as if you weren't wearing any armor at all. Along comes patch 14 and introduces the plate system. First off, I just want to make a big distinction between inbuilt armor and the replaceable plates. Most of you are aware that these are not necessarily the same, with plates giving no blunt damage if they block a bullet for example, and numerous times in testing that we've seen a plate absorb miracle rounds that it really shouldn't. This does seem to be a bit better after BSG's latest update, but there are still some quirks that I'm investigating so it's not completely normal let's say. Either way, inbuilt armor from everything that I have seen so far acts exactly like the old system, meaning that if APM hits around the plate on class 2 or class 3 soft armor, it will kill you in a single hit. This by itself is quite a significant buff to the bullet, but if plates don't follow the same rules as inbuilt armor, does this mean that plates prevent one shots in the same way? In order to test this, I dived into an interchange offline raid with a whole bunch of viewers on stream, as you can now have up to 14 people on interchange in one lobby if you invite in the lobby directly rather than using the group system and we shot a whole bunch of different armors. The first most important point to note was that we didn't have any instances of class 4 plates keeping the user alive from close range. The Osprey Assault with the Kibber Arms Titan, one shot. Thor with the Global Armor Steel, one shot. Osprey Assault with the Monocleat Plate, one shot. Trooper Monocleat, one shot. ANA M2 Kibber Arms Titanium, one shot. This was extremely surprising, as it means that the damage mitigation, at least against APM, is too small to remove even 5 damage from the bullet, which is a significant difference against inbuilt armor. To check that our previous knowledge was still true, we also tried shooting the Class 4 Ule rig, which is one of the only two armors left in the game that still has the old armor system with Class 4 inbuilt protection. Unsurprisingly, APM went through the Ule every time, but the armor's reduction meant that the wearer could survive a few rounds if healing between each one before the armor was too low durability to decrease the damage enough, and this is exactly what we would have expected from the old armor model. At this point, we do have to wonder, what damage then is actually being dealt to the player in the circumstances with the class 4 plates? Because if they die immediately, there is no way of really checking exactly what happened. So to figure this out, I hopped into a smaller raid to do the same experiment with class 4, except this time with stomach shots. Because the armor plate covers both thorax and stomach, and the same goes for the soft armor behind, we can check the exact damage being dealt with a small adjustment for blacked out limbs. First, wearing the Hex Attack rig with no soft armor and class 4 plates, a monocleat front plate specifically, I took 91 damage. This makes sense as 70 goes directly to the stomach which blacks out and then 21 ends up across the rest of the body. A blacked out stomach passes out damage at a rate of 105%, so 21 divided by 1.05 equals 20, which comes to exactly 90 base damage when you add them both together, which is the damage of an APM bullet. However, the weird part about this is that this shows that there was no mitigation at all. Next, we did the MMAC, same plate but with a class 2 backing instead. This dealt 93 damage, but as this test was all done in the same raid, I'd repaired my stomach with a CMS. 29 damage went direct to my new lower HP stomach, leaving 64 for the rest of the body, again at 105%, which turns into 61 base. Add back the 29, and that gets you to exactly 90 damage again. The final one was a Thor with another class 4 plate and class 3 behind. I did accidentally use the Spartan Omega plate instead, which is unfortunate, but here I took another 93 damage again. After another CMS, this was 13 to the stomach directly, with 80 passing through to the rest of the body, i.e. 76 base coming to 89 damage total. So with the Thor, we did see a small amount of reduction, just not enough to save us. 
This is either due to the different plates, which I doubt, or the presence of class 3 soft armor reducing some of the damage after the plate got penned, which I think is much more likely. There is also the question of range as well that we haven't answered, as damage and pen of bullets does both start to get lower the further out you get, but that one is for another time. I'm pretty confident now that APM will instantly kill through class 4 plates, at least at relatively close ranges, but this is not the only thing that we saw. Previous to all of this, I had run one set of tests against a class 5 plate, the GAC 3S 15M, which saw it take 3 shots before suddenly killing me, which is reasonably within expectation, but in the tests that we did live, there were some really odd results. In the old system, APM had a 18% chance to pen class 5, so it's not entirely infeasible that it could get through the armor some of the time, but with the mitigation, it should only only have hit for 60 even when it did. Bizarrely, the very first test we did against class 5 was versus the Redute M and a granite BR4 ceramic plate in which our very first hit went straight through and instantly killed the wearer. Wow! I wasn't expecting that. It went straight through the class 5 ceramic plate, straight through the chest and killed him in one shot, straight through class 5. In test 2, against a Gen 4 mobility with a class 5 cult locust plate, APM also penned but dealt 84 damage and blacked out the thorax with a bleed. Test 3 was against the class 5 Karund VM backplate, which absorbed one shot entirely and then killed on the second. We did two more, one against the Karund front plate, which penned and again blacked out the thorax with not quite enough damage to kill in one shot, and against the Altin as well, which took two through the top of the head to kill, but only one through the visor. At this point, I'm not exactly sure what is going on, but this does lead me to believe that it is penning more times than 1 in 5. It seems to me that as per the Thor example I showed we're right on the 85 damage threshold, and standing a little bit closer versus say the Redute M versus slightly further away like I was with the Karund and the Gen 4 could be the difference between doing 84 damage and a bleed to the Thorax versus outright killing you. I've only done limited testing against class 6 so far, but a Nesco plate which is combined materials in a Thor took 4 shots before the player died on the 5th, which Sounds pretty normal, but as you can imagine, I'm now a bit confused about class 5 and 6 with this bullet, to be honest. The only short take that I can really make of it at the moment is that it seems that there's no damage mitigation at all when you're penning through plates, which is very, very weird, and I'm also interested to test out some more class 5s to see if the pen chance is what it used to be in the old system or not. So, in terms of weapons, as always, you can put it into the VPO215 bolt action for sniping, but you just have to be careful over about 200 meter distances as the accuracy penalty can start to affect where your headshots will land. Below this, it's perfectly fine though, so don't get too stressed out about the accuracy because I know a lot of people freak out about it unnecessarily. I've been using the VPO209 a bit just to test it out, and clearly it's much more powerful on semi-auto, but although the cartridge is seemingly excellent, you just have to be a bit careful about how you play it given patch 14's heavy full auto meta. With the recall changes, we're now prone to getting full auto sprayed in most engagements by our opponents, which doesn't really lend itself to carefully placed shots. However, you can make it work if you treat it more like a medium distance DMR, something like the SVD, and the recall rework has helped in this playstyle. Previously, a fully modded 209 only just got to the base recall of its 762 cousin, the VPO136, but now the starting recalls of these two guns is much more similar, 120 for the 136 and 133 for the 209. Because we're shooting on semi and it feels good anyway in the new system, I've been leaning more heavily into ergonomics. I've been using the UAS AK stock, the cheapest Zhukov handguard from the flea, any decently ergonomic foregrip and the suppressor. It's also compatible with a 50 round drum, which I've been taking advantage of to complete Punisher 4 on Lighthouse because of these scav vest restrictions. As for getting APM these days, there are two ways to get it. You either buy it from the flea market or you craft it in the hideout. Workbench 3 has a craft for 50 SPP, 50 PS and a blue gunpowder, which is decent, but you need Prop 4 to buy the SPP cheaply. The two blue tape barter for a pack of eight tends to make the craft more expensive than the flea, so until Prop 4, you're probably just better off buying them from the marketplace. So finally, let's check out a couple of clips where APM has been working well so far. So I have to run streets and lighthouse on low if I want it to like not explode. I can run them fine at higher textures, honestly, but um, it makes the stream lag if I do that. The classic binaural tick. So you're not silent when you're crouched on snow, so you may as well walk. Is that an audio bug? Yeah, that's quite far away. It was an audio bug, but it was a person.
No, no, no. Absorbed like one hit, I think. Is APM still good? Well, I want to do a test on it, like an actual test. The problem is, it's very hard to disassociate like APM not being good versus me not being good. So if you want to delve further into which armors to use in the new system, go and check out my full tier list video to see some possibly surprising results of what is now bad and what's on top. Otherwise, as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons, and as always, have fun in your raids.